Hello, everybody, and welcome to the live stream. So this is our live stream on how to do a subnet of an IPv6 network. I thought I would do this. Um, I thought I would do this live stream live just in case anybody was around that wanted to come through and maybe um, ask questions as I went along. But it is a bit of a longer process to go through how to subnet understanding networks and all of those different things. So certainly feel free to pop in if you're here, post a comment, ask any questions that you might have. And certainly feel free, of course, to leave if, if you're busy or and catch up later on. So I'm going to post this on, you, on my YouTube channel, Learning and Technology with Frank. So it will be available to you. So hopefully everybody's here. Um, if you can hear me and you're here, go ahead and uh, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to assume that everybody can hear me. And I'm going to assume that uh, that we're good to go. So I'm not seeing any comments here, although I see a couple of folks are viewing. So thank you very much for tuning in. So, and if you can't hear me, let me know. That's the big one. So we're going to cover about four things this evening. We're going to first talk a little bit about what subnets are. We're going to talk about the concepts of networking at a very high level. And then we're going to look at how we might want to use subnets. And specifically, we'll need to understand a little bit of binary math. And then, don't worry, it's nothing too much. And then we're going to actually subnet a class C network. So we're going to subnet the class C network. And then we're going to actually create a little network diagram and show you how we would apply that to a network diagram. So we'll start off actually with a network diagram. Now, a couple things that we're going to do is I'm going to be working with a tablet here. So forgive me in advance if I'm not looking directly at you when I'm when I'm sharing the screen. It's mostly going to be the Microsoft whiteboard here. So yeah, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to talk about subnetting. I'm going to let you guys know what it is. And I'm going to make sure that you guys are up to speed on it. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. So we'll go ahead and share the screen so you can see my Microsoft whiteboard here. So you should be seeing a screen right now, the Microsoft whiteboard screen. And I'll just make it so it's taking out most of the screen. <clears throat> so we, when we look at networks, you might say, well, why bother subnetting? Why do I need to take a network range? So we have network ranges of addresses. And what we're going to do when we subnet those is we're going to say, let's break that down into a group of smaller networks. And the reason we may want to do that is because each of these networks that we have is going to be a broadcast boundary. And what I mean by that is that if I put different computers, which we'll refer to as hosts, and they could be a computer, it could be a phone, it could be any device that needs to participate within an IP scheme. And the reason we want to do that, of course, is to get on things like the internet or an internal network. Every single device, if it's connected to the network, if it sends out a broadcast message, every other device on the same network will hear that broadcast network. So one of the things that we're going to do is divide into smaller networks so that we can contain those broadcast boundaries. And that's going to be an important thing for us to do if we're in a situation where, let's say, I have a, a school and maybe I have four or five classrooms and I want each of those classrooms to be a discrete network to itself. So, for example, I have 20 computers in each classroom and I don't want, say, the computers in the grade three classroom showing up as available resources in the grade four classroom and vice versa. Or it could be something where I want to, say, Let's have this network and it's going to be able to go out on the internet, but this network is going to be barred from going out on the internet. That's a more advanced topic called access control lists, and we can look at that in a subsequent meeting later on. So um, hopefully everybody can see my whiteboard. So in this video here, I'm using an Intuos, uh, a Wacom Intuos tablet. So I've got my little pen here and such so you can see that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a typical network. So a network is typically separated. Actually, I'll make this uh, I'll make this a circle because that's the conventional way of diagramming it. Most networks are separated by routers. So the goal of a router is to actually allow me to have multiple networks, and a router will allow me to connect networks together. So for example, if I have one network out here connected to a switch, so I have one router port it's connected to a switch. 
that switch may have a number of host devices. These could be computers, phones, tablets, whatever the case may be. Then I may have another network It'll also connected to a switch, and that's going to have their own devices there. And just for the sake of clarifying, these are my triangle network, and this is my circle network, but we don't have triangle and, and circle networks. What we have is we have numerical values that determine which network that you're participating on, what subnet you're participating on. So if I have these different subnets out here, and the router is controlling which subnets can talk with each other, which subnets are separate from each other, um, then what I need to do is have a numerical way of specifying the various different networks that I have. So what I'm going to do here is, in the typical world of networking, we have class A, B, and C networks. And these are this is basically part of the internet protocol. And we also have D and E, but we're not going to worry about those. Those are multicast networks and experimental networks. But class A networks are owned by the largest companies out there. So that would be something, the first companies that were on the internet. And they could have an address of something, some crazy address like 1.0.0.0 or 10.0.0.0. Then the class B networks, we would have ones from 120, one. I have to go here, 130.0.0.0. Uh, uh, and then class C networks would be the ones that you're familiar with, which would be uh, anything that would be in the higher range there, which is the 192 and onwards. Okay, so actually let me erase that. We'll, we'll talk about class A, B, and C networks a little bit later on. But the point is that the way that we specify the network is by dividing it into four different numerical values. And those four different numerical values are representing what we call a binary octet. And don't worry if it's a little bit confusing right now. What we're going to do is we're going to look at, at how we can work with those octets. Now, What's important to us for the sake of this particular um, le lecture, if you would, or live stream that I'm doing here, is we're going to take a network range of 192.168.0.0.0 no, and let me just erase this here. And we're going to go in and we're going to say a portion of these numbers belong to the network and a portion of these numbers belong to the individual hosts on those networks. So what we're able to do here is we're able to use a subnet mask in order to say, you belong to the network portion of my address and you belong to the host portion of my address. So we have the network portion and we have the host portion of the addresses here. And the way that we determine what is and is on the what is and is not on the network and the host is through something called a subnet mask. So going to a class A network, the first number here, the first number that we have is my network. So the default subnet mask for a class A network is 255.0.0.0. My default subnet mask for a class B network is going to be the first two octets. So my default subnet mask on a class B network is going to be 255.255.0.0. And my default subnet mask on a class C network, you can probably guess this, is going to be the first three octets. So I'm going to take the first three octets as being part of my network here. And then I'm going to have a subnet mask here, default subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. So these sub default subnet masks are great, and we're going to see why they're important in just a moment. So if we take a look at the number of devices that I have left for network versus host, we're really dealing with an octet value, which is a binary set of eight bits. So you have eight bits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And these bits determine the subnet mask as well as the IP address. So we'll have one value which will determine the IP address 
and we'll have a second value, which will be the subnet mask, which will determine which are on the subnet and which are on the network or the host portion. So the reason this becomes important is because we need to use these numbers when we configure our systems to go back to that diagram that we have. We're going to provide a numerical value for each of the systems here. So that's going to have an IP address and a subnet mask. Every single device on our network is going to have an IP address and a subnet mask. In many cases, you might buy a router like a little home router, and it might have sort of a default setup in there. A lot of times what they will do is they'll have the default setup will be 192.168.1.0, and it'll give you up to, and this will make more sense later, up to 255 devices on your network. But we're going to subnet it. We're going to look at how we can create more networks. So if we have a look here and we take a look at the subnet mask here, it's the same idea. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each of these represents an octet, but remember, I actually have four octets that make up an IP version four network address. So I have the first octet, the second octet, the third octet, and the fourth octet. So you'll notice though that I don't put in a bunch of ones and zeros because humans wouldn't be too good at putting in a bunch of ones and zeros. I put in numerical values. But how do I get those numerical values? So the first thing, it's a little bit of a long walk to get here, but the first thing that we're going to look at is we're going to look at binary numbers and we're going to look at binary numbers as they relate to eight bits or an octet. So if I take those eight bits, we're not dealing with numbers that you might be used to. I mean, when you're born and you're in your crib, you look up and you see 10 little fingers, 10 little toes. And so we're very good with things like base 10. So we can use base 10. You're familiar with base 10. It has all of the values 0 all the way to 9. Notice that they take up one space in a column, and we have 10 distinct values. That's why we refer to it as base 10. What we have here is base 2. So when we're dealing with uh, uh, any type of binary, we're going to use base 2. And the way that base 10 works is if I take, let's just take four numbers. If I gave you $2,392, you'd know exactly what I was giving you, right? I'm giving you two ones, I'm giving you nine tens, I'm giving you three hundreds, and I'm giving you two thousands. Because you know that this is the ones column, you know this is the tens column, you know this is the hundreds column, and you know this is the thousands column. Well, really, if you look at it, this is 10 to the power of zero is one, 10 to the power of one is 10, 10 times 10 or 10 to the power of 2 is 100. 10 times 10 times 10 or 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. So I could express this as 10. I could express this as 10 to the power of 0. I could express this as 10 to the power of 1. This as 10 to the power of 2 and 10 to the power of 3. Well, guess what? I can do the exact same thing with base 2. So instead of 10, this is going to be expressed as 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 2, two to the power of 3, 2 to the power of 4, 2 to the power of 5, 2 to the power of 6, and 2 to the power of 7. So this becomes a very important ability for you to be able to look at this and to fill in these values because it's going to be the foundation of all subnetting that we do. Because remember that the computer can only really distinguish between two states, true, false, one, zero, on, off, signal, no signal. So everything expressed in a computer system is going to be of that nature, a one and a zero, uh, you know, a on or off. So what is two to the power of zero? Well, anything to the power of zero, it's going to be one. So that's my ones column. Two to, two to the power of one is two. Two times two is four. Two times two times two is eight. Times two is 16. Times two is 32. Times two is 64. Times two is 128. So imagine that you have this. This is my ones, my tens, my hundreds, my thousands. This here is my ones, my twos, my fours, my eights, 
my 16, my 32, my 64s, my 128. Now, if I add these all up, 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, add those up. 128 plus 64 is going to be 192, plus 32 is going to be 224, plus 16 is going to be 240, plus 8 is going to be 248, plus 4 is going to be 252, plus 2 is going to be 254, plus 1 is going to be 255. Does that look familiar? Because remember the default subnet masks that I talked about? Well, if you look at that, 255 expressed as a decimal value could easily be expressed as 1111111 in computer language. In a, in a binary pattern on a single octet, 255 in decimal, so if this is a decimal value, could be expressed as 8 bits turned into the on position. Now, if you want to get a bit more advanced, this could also be converted to hexadecimal and it could be expressed as FF. Let me know in the comments or let me know, you know, either if you're watching this later or whatever, let me know if you're interested in, um, in learning about the hexadecimal system. But we're going to work with binary and decimal in our environment here. So if I have some sort of value, let's say I have an IP address of 192.168.1.1. Seventeen, And this is the IP address of my computer. And we're going to look at how we can later on assign these addresses and such. But let's just say that's the IP address. And my subnet mask is 255.255.255.255. Uh, yeah, two, a zero actually at the end. So this here really is 1234567 dot one two three four five six seven eight dot one two three four five six seven eight dot zero 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 this is the binary equivalent of this subnet mask now if i wanted to write this out in binary i could do that as well what i'd have to do is just go in uh, as you can see above to get 192 i'd have to take 128 plus 64 so this would be you know, the, the 192 would be 1100, but that's beyond where we need to be right now. But the point here is it's a lot easier to use these decimal numbers. But if we're going to do subnetting, we have to understand how those decimal numbers convert into binary values. Kind of an important thing. And just excuse me as well. If I'm looking over here, it's just because this is the screen where I'm running the meeting. And this is where I'm actually doing the, the writing on the whiteboard. Okay. So that's the binary system. And one of the things that you'll want to do if you're learning if you're learning this material for your Cisco certification or if you're learning this material for Network Plus, you need to be able to convert decimal to binary and you need to be able to convert binary to decimal. But you'll only need to be able to do that within a six single um, hexadecimal range. So you'll only be working with the, the decimal numbers 0 to 254 and you'll only be working with the uh, binary numbers, um, the uh, one eight bits at a time. So, for example, if I take decimal values, we'll just do a little exercise here together. If I take the following decimal values, um, 240, and let's say uh, 231, and let's say uh, 19. Okay, there's a few things I want you to notice here. First of all, notice that this is an even number. This is an even number, odd and odd. Because we're dealing with base 2, the only way to get an odd number is if that last bit is on. Everything else would be an even number. But let's take 192 and ask ourselves, how can I go in and how can I work with that, uh, that binary number? Now I'm just going to go here. There we go. It's just my whiteboard was giving me grief. So let me erase this. Okay. So if I go in here and I look at 192, I only have to deal with 8 bits, okay? So we'll deal with 8 bits. And remember that those 8 bits are 2 to the power of 1 is my 1s. 2 times power of 1 is 2s, my 4s, my 8s, my 16s, 
my 32s, my 64s, and my 128s. Okay, so 192. Do I need to use that 128? Yes, I do. So I use that 128, and now I have how many left? Well, I have 64 left. So now I'm going to put the 64 on here. Okay, so now I don't, I've gotten to 192. So now I don't have to do anything else. This here is the binary equivalent of 192. Let's do that again so that you can get a feel for this. And I've chosen the first two. I kind of chose them on purpose. You'll see why. So to get to 240, do I need the 128? Yeah, come along. Do I need the 64? Yeah, I do. Now I'm at 192. Do I need the 32? I sure do. Now I'm at 240. So I'm at 240, and now I don't need anything else, so I can leave those all in the zero position. This is the binary equivalent of 240. Oh, hi, Mata. How are you? So that's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate your kind comment there. And, you know, anything I can do to help you with your, with your teaching, your English teaching, let me know. So if we look at this at 231, now, first of all, you'll notice this is a, is a odd value. So I'm going to have to, I know I'm going to have to have this bid on, but we won't do it yet. So 231, do I need the 128? I do. Do I need the 64? I do. Now I'm up to 192. Do I need the 32? I don't, because that would take me all the way to 240. So I don't need that. Right now I'm at 192. So I'm at 192 right now. Do I need the 16? Well, if I add 16 on here, what am I going to get? I'm going to get the 8. I'm going to get the 10 carry. That'll take, yep, so I do need it. That'll take me to 208. Now, do I need the 8? Well, if I put 8, then I'll be at 216. So I will. I'll take the 8. Then I need, do I need the 4? If I take the 4, I'll be at 220. So I'm going to take the 4. And do I need, oh, I, so, oh, Frank made a mistake here. Hang on a sec. So I've got 231 here. So if I look here, I am going to need to, to take the 16, right? That's going to bring me up to the, um, it's going to bring me up to 218, I think. Uh -huh. So that's the 8, bring it up. Yeah, it's, I can bring it up to 218. Then I'm going to grab the 8. That's going to bring me up to 220 uh, plus 8, 226. So I need that. Then I'm going to need to take the four, that's going to bring me up to 230. I don't need the two and I need the one. So this is the binary equivalent of 231. Now let's take a look at 19. Now I'm, I'm doing a few of these. If you want to get good at subnetting, you do need to go through and do these conversions. And it is kind of best to go through. Um, it's best to go through if you're, you know, um, practicing because you need to do the subnetting. So I'm just doing four examples here. Hey, how's it going? Oh, that's cool. It's one of my old students from 2008. So that's awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. And by the way, guys, I, I apologize. I was saying that I'm not always looking at the screen. So if I missed your comment, I don't get you right away. That's great. I really appreciate all the kind comments, everyone. So if we have a look here at 19, well, I don't need 128. I don't need 64. I don't need... Oh, I don't need 128. I don't need 64. I don't need 32. Do I need 16? I do need the 16, but then 16 plus 8 is too much, so I don't need the, the 8 there. Do I need the 4? Well, if I take the 16 plus 4, that'd be 20. It's too much. I don't need it. Do I need the 2? Yep, because that'll bring me up to 18 and then the 1. So here is the binary equivalent of 19. So I kind of find this fun to do. Um, I probably should do it a little bit more because I did a little mathematical error there. But you get the idea that what I want to do is be able to convert my decimal into binary. And conversely, I also want to be able to convert my, bi uh, my binary into decimal. So let's just do a couple of those just so that we can practice the skills. So if I take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... I'll just do two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's say this is one, zero, one, one, zero, 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 one. And this one is going to be one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero. 
Now, the first thing is a little bit of a trick is that you can see this is going to be an odd number because the only way to get an odd number is by making that last bit a one. And this is going to be an even number because it's base two. So we know that. So that's a little bit of a check. But, you know, we want to make sure that we get the right number. So if we go in here, both, this has 128. So I have a 128. I have no 30, uh, 64s. I have a 32. I have a 16. I have none of these, none of these, none of these, and I have a 1. So the value here is 128 plus 32 is going to be 160 plus 16 is going to be 176. 177 is the, uh, is the decimal equivalent of this binary pattern. How did you guys do with that? Maybe you can fire that in the comments if you're still around. Or it's up to you, but, you know, practice these. So here's the second one that I have. It's going to be an even number. I know that. So I'm going to take a 128. I need that. I got. I have a 64. Don't have one of those. Don't have one of those. That was a 32. That was a 16. I have an 8. I have a 4. And then I don't have anything else. So let's add them up. So 128 plus 64 is 192 plus 8 is going to be 200 plus 4. This is 204. So this is now my decimal equivalent of this binary pattern. So if you're planning to do, like I say, a Cisco or a Network Plus or any type of subnetting, what I recommend is that you just write down like a list of 10 numbers. Now, they're going to be numbered between 0 and 255, like uh, 255. Now, 0 is really easy. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 255 is really easy. It's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. But within that range... Just write down 10 numbers within that range. And then what you can do is you can practice doing this by hand. And then you can use the calculator in Windows. It actually has a binary to decimal conversion function. And you're going to say, well, hey, you know, if, if it has that function, why do I need to bother learning this? Well, if you're writing an exam, you're not allowed to use those functions. So there are actually subnet calculators you can get as well. But the reality is that you know, learning this will help you in all aspects of networking. So that's why I think it's important for you guys to learn. Okay, so that's the conversion. So you want to practice some decimal to binary, and you want to practice some binary to decimal. Okay, so I want to make sure that you're up to speed on that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at why this is important for subnetting. So a typical subnet might be something, a network that I might have would be a class C network. So let's say I have the following class C network, 192.168.1.0. Has a default subnet mask of 255, 255, 255.0. This means that I have the 192 is fixed. It belongs to the subnet. So that's a network address. The 168 is also a network address. The 1 is a network address as well, but I have full control. I own all of the hosts that are part of this network. Sometimes the N's and the H's look almost the same. So, oh, is it static every so often? Okay, hopefully, hopefully it improves here. Um, but let me know if there's problems with the static. Let me, I'll just dial it down a little bit. Can you guys still hear me okay? So I've, I've reduced the, uh, the input so that hopefully it's not peaking. So if we have a look here, so I own everything here. Well, if I own this octet, how many computers can I have on my network? How many devices can I have on my network? I can have 200 and 54 devices. They will be numbered from zero all the way to 254. And you might say, well, what about 255? That's considered the broadcast address. And in fact, zero is considered the network address. So I really have everything from one to 254 that I can assign to devices on my network. If I reference zero, I'm talking about the whole network, the 192.168.1 network. And if I reference 255, I'm sending a broadcast signal to every device on that network. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to break this down into more networks called subnets. Okay. Now, right now I'm doing a class C network. 
The reason I'm doing a class C network is it's the easiest one to begin learning with. And then what we'll do is maybe in subsequent videos or even the live streams, I can do subsequent um, subsequent types of, of networking here. So if you're still here and you can hear me and stuff, let me know if, uh, if, if everything's making sense so far or if you need me to clarify anything. I'm, I'm, all, I'm sort of look over here. So this, the first thing we did is we said basically why subnet? And the reason we want a subnet is because I don't want to put all of my devices into one network because the broadcast traffic will, will cause problems. What I want to do is I want to take my devices and I want to break them into multiple networks so that I can keep those networks separated. And the device I use to separate those networks is a router. So that's the why. The second thing we looked at is binary numbering system. And we specifically looked at a octet or eight bits. And we looked at how we could use base two in order to understand which values are part of which position in the octet. And we practiced that by taking decimals and converting them to binary and by taking binary and converting them to decimal. Okay. So that's, that's the first part of this video. And that's going to come in handy for us. The next thing we'd looked at is we said we have our very own address, 192.168.1.0, of which we know the first three octets are the network ID and the last octet is what I control. This would have been assigned to me by, you know, potentially a the, the internet, internet authority can assign these. This, this is a unique address. This is a special address, which is called, basically it's a, a public address that anybody can use. So that's why you'll see there was a, there's a reserved class A network, there's a reserved class B network, and there's re reserved class C networks, as a lot of class C networks. And these are not routable on the internet. That's why if you, if you have a home network, these will be your internal network. But if by accident they sneak out of your router, they try to run away from you, the internet says, no, I'm sorry, I'm not going to route anything with 192.168. I'm not, I'm not doing it. So basically there's a whole bunch of addresses that everybody can use internally because they don't touch other networks. So that's, again, a little bit more of an advanced topic, but just be aware that uh, Class C networks, the ones that are available on the internet, Class A and B networks, the ones that are available on the internet, are actually controlled and assigned. It was quite interesting because when I was doing this, you know, back in the late 1990s, we never thought we would be in a situation where we had to subnet in 2022. We thought everything would be either IP version 6, right, where we would, or even something evolved from that. But the reality is we have to do this because it's still very much a skill set that's needed. Okay, so let's do some subnetting. But like many things, do I need to worry about the first three octets? No, because I have no choice. Those have either been assigned to me or chosen as my network. So the subnet here is easy. It's 255, 255, 255. And that's going to be what begins this, this network, the subnet here. So I'm really only concentrating on subnetting that last octet. And what we're going to do when we subnet that last octet is we're going to go in and we're going to take those eight bits that we own. Now, the funny thing about bits, they always want to be with their friends. So I can't just take one bit and say, you go and join the networks. You, you go and join the network stuff and the rest of you are all, all host systems. I have to take at least two and then the rest of these bits, I can go ahead and I'll actually use H for host. And the, the, I, can, I can assign these here. So what I could do is I could create a subnet that says I'm in charge of this last um, octet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide and I'm going to say two of those bits are going to go off and become sub uh, network addresses. And I'll use the word network and subnet kind of interchangeably here. But those are going to be network addresses and the remaining six are going to be host addresses. Well, this also gives me a mathematical formula because this is two bits, this is six bits. Well, I'm going to show you something called the magic chart. And this is something, I guess, I'm going to look up here. Uh, Simulia, you, you, would have, um, you would have seen this, so hopefully this is a good review for you. 
So I have a student here in the live stream that was a student back in 2008. I just make me feel old. Thank you very much. But the idea is the magic chart is very useful. One of the things I really recommend is if you're going into an exam. So let's say you're going into a Cisco exam or any certification exam that involves um, that involves having to do any type of subnetting or networking. The way the exams work is you go into the room and you sign in for the exam and you're given a couple of uh, dry erase boards and you're allowed to take notes on there. Now, and of course, this is assuming you go to write the exam. There's a different set of rules if you're at home. But what you can do if with those dry erase boards is you can write down anything you want on them from memory. And then what you can do is start the exam. So I always tell my students, go ahead and write down this magic chart because it's going to help you with subnetting. And don't hit start until you've written this down. So that gives you a few extra moments and a reference sheet of paper you can use. What do I mean by the magic chart? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to have networks and we're going to have hosts on those networks. Now, I own, in the case of a Class C network, I own eight bits. That's how many bits I can play around with. So what I'm going to do is if I give two bits to go to the network, I'm just going to use a different color here. So if I go and I have two bits that go to the network, that leaves how many for hosts? Six, two plus six equals eight. I'm in charge of eight bits. I control eight bits. What if I take three and make those part of the network? That would leave me with how many? That would leave me with five. Three plus five equals eight. If I take four, that's going to leave four. If I take five, that's going to leave three. So you can see that this is always adding up to that eight, okay? If I take six, that leaves two. And remember I said that I have to, I can take two and at, at the minimum and I leave two at the minimum. So then the question is how many networks can I create and how many hosts can I create when I do this scheme? Well, let's have a look. If I take two, two times two is equal to Four. Two times two times two, eight. Times two, 16. Times two, 32. Times two, 64. So if I borrow two bits of the eight that I'm in control of, I can make four subnets. If I borrow three, I can make eight. If I borrow four, 16, 32, and 64. But conversely, the more I borrow and tell to go and become networks, the less I have on each network. So here, two to the power of six is 64. So I can have four networks with 64 machines on each. Now there is a little trick here that we have to do after this, but if you can do this part, you're in good shape. So we can do 32 here, we can do 16, we can do eight here, and we can do four here, okay? So you can see here, and these are all to the power of two because we're in binary. So this is power of two. So the thing is, though, we have to have one address that identifies the network. And we have to have one address that identifies the, the broadcast on the network. And then I have to have an address that identifies the, the port. So I'm a little ahead of myself here. The point here is that because of the overhead, I have to do minus two on each of these because I have to reserve one for broadcast, one for network identification. So if I borrow two bits, I can only have two usable networks, six usable networks, 14 usable networks, 30 usable networks, and 62 usable networks. So the idea here is that you can't use all of them because what's happened is you have to have a network ID and a broadcast ID. So we do this minus two, we give up some of the addresses that we've sliced off in order to become network address and broadcast address. The same applies here. So I can have two networks with 64, but then I have the broadcast and I have the network. So each of these is minus two as well. So here I have 62, 30, 14, six, 
and 2. So that's what I'm left with. What does this mean? Well, now we can start drawing some diagrams, right? So I could say, okay, I have a router and I want to have four classrooms on the router, okay? So four classrooms, we're gonna have switches here. So this is a little network diagram. And I could say for each classroom, I have 14 students that I wanna put in the classroom, 14 computers in each classroom. And that'd be pretty nice, okay? So where can I, so look here, 14. Now, 14 means how many classrooms can I have? 14 classrooms. But here's the trick. You have to give up one address to be the port of the router. It's often referred, well, it's not often, it is referred to as your default gateway. So 14 won't work. But if I want to have, let's say I want to have 10 here, and I want to have 12 here, and I want to have 10 here, and I want to have 9 here. All of those will work, and then I have to have the plus one, right? Because you have to have that default gateway. You have to have a way to get out of the room to transfer from network to network. So every one of these is plus one. So we have 11, 13, 11, and 9. This would work. And so we would have up to 14 different subnets. So that's one way of kind of planning things out to understand how many subnets you might need. Now, you might be saying, okay, that's cool. Um, let's do one more diagram just to give you a little bit of experience here. So let's say I have the following scenario. I have a router and I want to create three networks. And in one of those networks, I want to have 25 computers. And in one of those networks, I want to have 20 computers. And in one of those networks, I want to have, let's say, 15 computers. Now, first of all, we know that we need to reserve one IP address for the router port. So we know that I'll need 21 addresses, I'll need 26 addresses, and I'll need 16 addresses. Well, is there anyone? So 62, that would work, but I can only have two networks. I need three networks. 30 would work, six networks. I'm only using three, but 30, none of these exceeds 30. So this is a good candidate. 14, nope, they exceed 14, so I can't use that. Can't use that, can't use that. So I'm going to use this particular subnet mask. And you might say, well, wait a second, Frank. What is the subnet mask? Ha ha. I was hoping you would ask that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, in order to go in and create the subnet mask, if I borrow two bits, so I'm just going to do a little erase here for a second here. So we'll just erase this square that I did. This is something a little, little funnier. I go pretty crazy when I'm doing this on the whiteboard in my classrooms. So I usually I usually wind up filling like three, three whiteboards full of stuff. So the question is, how do I borrow two bits? Well, the way I borrow two bits is by going one, one, and leaving the rest at zero. So what's one and one? Well, remember, this isn't a one. This is a 128. This is a 64. So my subnet mask here is going to be dot 192. So if I use the subnet mask 255, 255, 255, because remember, I can't do anything about the first three octets, 192, this is going to divide my networks into two networks with up to 62 machines per network. Isn't that cool? What subnet would I use for, for this here? I'll give you a couple of seconds just to maybe pop it into your head. What would I do? I'd borrow three bits. I grabbed the 32. Now it's going to be 224. What if I want to borrow four bits? I'll grab the 16. Now it's going to be 240. What if I want to borrow five bits? I'll grab the eight. It's going to be 248. What if I grab the uh, six bits? I'm going to grab the four. It's going to be 252. This is why it's so good to do this magic chart really quickly so that you can quickly see what subnet masks give you how many networks, subnets, and how many hosts per network. So when you're thinking about designing your network, you can say, I need this many hosts and this many networks, and you can look for the best fit, right? So if somebody says to you, I need to have 10 classrooms with 10 computers, this would be your choice because you could have up to 14 with up to 14 computers. This wouldn't give you the 10 networks. 
This wouldn't give you the 10. This would give you the 10 networks, but only six hosts per network. So this magic chart can help you really design your networks very quickly. And uh, hopefully it's, you know, one of the things that's tough with YouTube here in a live stream is it's hard for me to know if you're getting this. Um, I think that what happens is you sometimes have to watch this more than once. I know that with a lot of my students, I'll repeat the lecture in the classroom. And for some students, once they get it, it's like, that's one of my greatest feelings as an instructor. Sometimes you can actually hear their brain go click and it just, you can see them light up and they're like, I got it. So I hope that some of you are experiencing that this evening. So anyways, that's my magic chart. So what does this mean? So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can develop an address scheme from this magic chart. And this is where it's as easy as falling off a cliff. So now we've gone through, we've taken a look at why we want subnets, because I wanna have different networks and I don't wanna put all my computers in one with a big broadcast domain. We've looked at how we can convert from decimal to binary and binary to decimal, because that's an essential skill for this. And we only have to worry about going from 0 to 255 we, and 8 octets. And then we wanted, we had a look at creating this magic chart. And if I was to go through, and I'm just going to do a super fast review of it, because I'll show you how fast it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is my, this is my 1s. This is my 2s, my 4s, my 8s, my 16s my 32s, my 64s, my 128s, okay? So if I go through and I borrow two, that leaves me with six. If I borrow three, that leaves me with five. If I borrow four, that leaves me with four. If I borrow five, that leaves me with three. If I borrow six, that leaves me with two. Then the question is, how many can I create in terms of subnets? To create subnets, two to the power of two, I can create four minus the two. Ah, that's why I don't have, I have to be careful how I do my fours on the whiteboard because I have it inking to shape. I can create four, but I have to give up two for the broadcast and such. Here I can create two to the power of three. So I can create two times two times two. So I can create eight, giving up two means giving up the two means I have six. Here I can create uh, 16. Oh, sorry, just a little bit out of alignment there. Here I can create 16. Giving up the two means there's 14 usable. Here I can create 32, meaning that there's 30 usable. Here I can create 64, which means that there are 62 usables. Here that leaves, you can just do the opposite. So here I'm gonna have 64 minus the two, I'm gonna have 62. I'm going to have 30, I'm going to have 14, I'm going to have 6, and I'm going to have 2, right? How do I borrow 2? The way I borrow 2 is by grabbing the first 2. I'll grab the 128 and the 64, subnet mask of 192. Grab 3, subnet mask of 224. Subnet, grab 4, subnet mask of 240. Grab 5, subnet mask of 248. Grab six, subnet mask of 252. So if you can get into the habit of building this super fast, you'll, you'll really get into subnetting quite easily. So I've, I've built it for you twice, once a little slow, once a little fast. Hopefully that all makes sense to you. So now let's take a network diagram and let's do some addressing because I have to come up with the actual addresses. So what happens is every single device needs to be configured. And there really are three different elements that we put on each device in order to let it participate in a network. So in terms of the physical aspect of the network, we have a router. That router has different ports on it. Each port in a router is an interface to a different network. And it could be that one network connects one router to another. And now you know the secret of the internet that all the internet is, is routers connected to other routers connected to other routers. That's beyond the scope of tonight. I can't teach you a CCNA in one evening, but the idea is that routers talk to routers. But if I'm going to create these networks here, 
right? So I'm going to create all these different networks here. So maybe I have a router. And I want to create four or five networks on it. I need to give them addresses. And the three elements that we put there for addresses is we have to put in a unique IP address. This must be unique. Okay, it, you can't have IP addresses that conflict. Then I must put in a subnet mask and this must make it part of a network. So the subnet mask will be the same for all members of the same network. And then we put in something, I'll even use a different color here. Let me grab a purple pen. We put in something called a default gateway. And the default gateway is actually the router port that is the unique IP address for the router port. So let's go ahead and work with these and show us how we can create and show you how you can create these addresses. So what I'm going to do when I create addresses, and the class C is probably the easier one to do. So I have an address here of 192.168.1.0. Okay. So let's take the subnet mask here of 255. 255, 255, I have no control over those first three octets. And then I'll use the mask of 100, uh, let's do 224, that's a good one. So we'll do 224. So we know from the magic chart above that with 224, I'm gonna have to get used to writing my force. You know what, I'll just go in to my whiteboard here and I'll say, let's not enhance the ink shapes. Okay, so, 224, I know that I'm going to use 224. So 224 means I borrowed how many bits? It means that I borrowed 224. See where the magic chart is handy? I borrowed three bits. So the way that I can do the addressing is literally by falling off a cliff. It's my little trick. So what I do is I draw out the binary. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And what I do is 224 means that I borrowed three bits. I got that from the magic chart. One bit, everything's good. Two bit, everything's good. Third bit, and then I fall off the cliff. This was my 128, my 64. So 32 is the bit that tripped me and made me fall off the cliff. So what I can do here is I now have my networks are going to increment by 32. So my first network, and I'm just going to go 192.168.1 because every network will start with that. My first network is going to be dot .32. My next network is going to be dot .64. My next network is going to be dot .96. My next network is going to be 32 on that is going to be 100 and uh, why can't I do 32? 128. 128 will always be a network, by the way. It's just uh, that's a good little check that you can do. And then uh, plus 32 is going to be 160. And then plus 32 is going to be uh, 192. And then, boom, it would be 224. But 224 is my subnet mask. So I don't use that and I don't use the zero. There is something later on called variable length subnet masking, but hey, let's walk before we run. So how many networks do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. If I go back up to my magic chart, how many networks did I say I would have if I borrowed three bits? Six. I would have six. So now what's the number just before 30 or, you know, if I have the 32, the number just before 64 is going to be 63. This is the broadcast address. So this is my broadcast address for every host on this subnet. This is my network address for, for this network. So what are the IP addresses I can use? I can use dot .33 all the way to dot .62. And if you count, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62. Guess what? How many times, what did I reach there? I reached 30. So we go up to the magic host. I have three network. I have six networks 
because I borrowed three bits. I have six networks with 30 hosts on each. See how I did that? And then my next network, what's one before 96? It is 95. I'm not going to do this each time, but I promise you, you can use your fingers. If you count from point six or from 65 all the way to 94, that will be 30. Every one of these networks will have 30 hosts in them. This one here from 97 all the way to, well, one before 128 is going to be 127. So you're going to be all the way up to 120, ah, 126. So you'll be all the way up to 126. Okay. And you're going to see those. And then if you do the next one, right before 160 is going to be 159. And all of the ones in here will be 129 all the way up to 158. Right. And here, one before this 191, right? Brought one before 192, and all of these will be 161 all the way to 190. And then finally, you might say, well, where's the last one? It's going to be one before the subnet mask. So my subnet mask was 224, so it's 223 is the broadcast address. And the 30 hosts in there are going to be 193 all the way to 222. So now I have gone through and I have created this network address scheme. So that's my network address scheme. So what does this look like on my diagram? Let's, uh, I'll just move this so we can see it on the screen and I'll do a little of er erasing here so we can clean stuff up a little bit. And we can, we'll, we'll do a simple network, okay? So hopefully this is so far so good, okay? Hey, how's it going? So if I don't get you right away here, I apologize in advance. I, I'm, I, your chats are on the side here. So I don't know when Roof and when you came in, uh, but hello and welcome. So uh, we got that here. Okay. So if I go in and I say to myself, okay, you know what? I have a network. So I have a router just for the sake of this diagram. Routers are normally diagrammatically shown as circles, but I'm just going to create a square box because I'm going to say, I, because in real world, they're not like circles. <laughs> I mean, that'd be cool if they had circular routers. Anyways, routers are boxes. They go, they're, they're units that go into a, a rack. Anyways, and they'll have ports on them. And each of these ports needs to have its own IP address. Well, guess what? I can use the IP addresses that I created. And typically speaking, when we're, when we're addressing our networks, we usually use the low or the high number for the address of network equipment. So I normally use the router port is normally going to be the first IP address. And then I usually put all my servers and everything as the higher range of addresses. And anyway, I'll show you what I mean by that. So you can go into the router and part of the, I'll use Cisco as an example, as part of the Cisco uh, operating system, Cisco iOS, I can configure each of these ports with a unique address that's part of a subnet. And then I can actually configure the router to let the subnets talk with each other or not talk with each other through access control lists. But these are going to be connected out. Each of these ports will be connected out to a network switch. And that network switch, in my case, I could have up to 30 devices. But remember, the router is going to take one of the addresses. So I can have up to 29 different devices on each of the subnets if I'm using my 255, 255, 255, 244 address, two, uh, 224 address. So this is how we're going to configure these systems. So I'm not going to do obviously 30 and all these, but what I'm going to do is let's say I have a scenario where today I've got four networks and I want them each to be individual networks. Well, let's give the router of these an address. Now, if I go in to configure the router, I'm going to put in underneath the IP address, I'm going to put in 192, dot one six eight dot one dot thirty three for the first network i'm going to put in a subnet mask of the one that we just did of two five five two five five two five five two two four and the router itself is the default gateway. So it can have another gateway which is another router port but we won't go into that. So this here would be the address for this port. 
So I would configure this router port with this address. When we're doing our network diagrams, this would become a little bit much to type this all in. So what we do is we'll normally say, this is going to be 0.33. This here is going to be point, we'll grab the next one, 65. This one here is going to be the next one, 0.97. This one here is going to be the next one, 0.12. Uh, nine. Okay. Four networks. We still have a couple left over that we can use if we add two more switches because we have up to six. So the idea is that when I say three, three, I'm really saying 192.168.133 is what I'll configure into the router and then subnet mask. Normally I won't put in this whole thing here. What I will do is I'll say it's going to be two, 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 four. Now, in fact, what you can do is this is, is a lot of times this is eight bits. This is eight bits. This is eight bits. And I borrowed three bits. So it'd be 24 plus three. I'd say slash 27. So that's uh, CIDR notation. So I've borrowed the 27 bits are comprising the subnet mask. So that's how I might reference it if I'm designing a network as slash 27 means that I borrowed 888, which is a given because it's class C, and then three extra for 27. So slash 27. Now, each of the computers that's going to be connected, so let's say I connect up a computer on here, what do I have to give it? Well, remember, I say I have to give it three things. I have to give it a unique address, a network, subnet mask, and I have to give it a router default gateway. So this computer, it's on the 33 network, so I'm going to give it the IP address, and I'll write the whole thing out. So I'm going to give it the IP address of 192 dot one six eight dot one dot thirty four because thirty three is taken I'm going to give it the subnet mask of two five five two five five two five five dot two two four and I'm going to give it the default gateway of my purple pen of one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot 33 the router port right so every host on here is going to have the same subnet mask and going to have the same default gateway but is going to have a unique ip address from the range of its specific subnet and i can have up to 29 again because the router took one so i have 30 in total of which the router takes one. So I can have 29 computers connected up and this one might be dot 35. And this one here might be dot 36. And then I have a printer and it needs an address. It's dot, normally with the printer, I'll put it at the high end, dot 62. And I have maybe a server on there and that server is gonna be dot 61, right? So that's a common way of doing things. So I don't know how many folks have, I, it's a lot on a Sunday evening to do this. You, some of you might have to come back and watch again. But how many, if you're here, how many people are following along? Hopefully a few folks are, right? You can put that in the chat or maybe maybe I've, I've lulled you into networking sleepy time. I don't know. But the point is, you know, that's the nice thing about recording this is you can come back and see what I've done, right? So that's an example of going through and doing an entire subnet. And the truth is, I don't know anybody who can watch this once without practicing and understands it. So the whole idea behind this is that I've given you some tools here to help you understand it. But I'm going to do another subnet here. So uh, if you're watching later, uh, if you're watching tonight and you want to see another one, hold tight. And if you're watching later, here's another example. So again... I'm just going to go super, super fast through a couple of things here because I do this each time and it's reinforcing what I've, what I've shown you so far. Okay. So the first thing is I'm going to create my magic chart. So I know I can have, let's say this time I have 192.168.55.0. That's my class C network. I know that the first three octets I can't do anything about. It's 255. 255.255.0. That is the default subnet mask for a class C network. Now I know that I own the last octet. If I own the last octet, what do I own? 
I own eight bits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I know through the power of binary system, this is my ones, my twos, my fours, my eights, my sixteens, my thirty twos, my sixty fours, my one twenty eights. I'm going through this a lot quicker this time, but hopefully you're following along or at least it's starting to make sense. Now, if I own eight, I can start borrowing. I can borrow two, three, four, five, six. I have to leave two, I have to take at least two. So I can borrow two, three, four, five, or six. If I do that, that leaves me with six, five, four, three, two. I know that two times two is four minus two is going to be equal to two usable sub, oh, better erase that, can't be using green there. I know that this is going to yield two times two is four minus two is two. Times Two times two times two is eight minus two is six. Times two again would be 16 minus two is 14. Five would be 32 minus two is 30. To the power of six would be 64 minus two is 62. This is how many usable subnets I have. With the host side, uh, I don't want to do all that math again. No problem. It's just the reverse. 62, 30, 14, 6, and 2. Right? It's the same thing, just in reverse. So if I create two subnets, 62 on each. If I create six, 30 on each. That's the one I demoed. 14, 14, 30, 6, 30, uh, 62, 2. So how do I do that? I do that by borrowing bits. Here I borrowed two bits. If I borrow two bits, 128 and 64, 192. If I borrow three, 224. If I borrow four, 240. If I borrow five, 248. If I borrow six, it's 252. How did I get those values? 128 and 64, that's two, 192. Plus 32, 224. Plus eight, 240. Plus four, uh, sorry, so if I go here, if I borrow two, it's 128 and 64, that's going to be 192. If I borrow three, it's going to be 224. If I add another 16, it's going to be 240. If I borrow the 8-bit, it's going to be 248. If I borrow the 4, it's going to be 252. So you can go across, but I prefer to go down. Okay, so that's an idea of how many bits I borrow. So now I have a problem, right? Somebody comes up to me, my, my supervisor comes up to me and says, hey, we're opening a new office. I say, cool. They say, what I'd like you to do is take a router, and what we're going to do is we're going to connect that router out to the internet, and that's off to the cloud, right? And what we're going to do is we'll have a port here, and that's going to be the default gateway for all networks. Now, again, we're not learning how to configure a router tonight. Um, if you're interested, comment later or comment now, and let me know if you want more networking type stuff. Tonight's just subnetting. And they're saying, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to have a shipping department and we're going to have a sales department and we're going to have a HR department and we're going to have a finance department. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have three uh, lounges for guests and product displays. Okay, cool. So how many networks do I have? Well, I have this network here is going to be shared with the internet. Don't worry about that one for right now, but it is going to have to be accessible. But I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different subnets that I need. Back to the magic chart. Will this give me seven? No. Will this give me seven? No. These three will give me seven. So that gives me seven. That gives me seven. That gives me seven. So what should be the next question I ask? How many machines will be or how many devices will be on each of these different rooms? And they say, well, what we're going to do is we have five people working here. We have three people working here. We have eight people working here. We have uh, four people working here. And each of these, we're going to allow up to 10 devices to be connected. So I look here and go, okay, the maximum here is 10. Will this give me 10? Yes, it will. Will this give me 10? No, it won't. No, it won't. 
So these ones didn't give me enough networks. These ones don't give me enough hosts on the networks. This means I have one choice and one choice only. I have to use the 240 subnet mask. So that's the subnet mask that I'm going to use. Cool. See how I was able to solve that problem? So now it says, okay, if I'm using 240, so I'm not going to do the first three octets. We know what they are, right? They're 255, 255, 255. So 240. Well, if I'm using 240, how many bits did I borrow? I borrowed four bits. So if I go here and I borrowed four bits, that means I went one, no problem. I went two, no problem. I went three, no problem. On the fourth bit, that was the last bit I borrowed, I fell off the cliff, right? Everything beyond that is going to be used by the hosts on the networks, okay? So as I was falling off that cliff, I look back and I see 16. So I say to myself, first network, 16. Next network, plus 16, 32, 48. And just so you know, I have a mental block here that I always have to struggle with. Uh, it's with the adding. So, so don't laugh at me if I have to go back here. 48 plus 16 is going to be 64, right? 64 plus 14 is going to be, oh, what do they do here? 14 plus 16 is right. That's 64, right? Oh, man. So this is sometimes where I, I sometimes have to pause and take a calculator. I, I, I know what it is. I'm just second guessing myself. So if I go in here, so it's never, you can use a calculator a little bit here. You can't really use it in the test, but I'll add 16 to that. Yeah, so 64 plus um, 16 is going to be 80. Plus 16 is going to be 96. Plus 16 is going to be 100. And that's the one that I always get wrong. Uh, 96. Yeah, 112. Then I'm good. Uh, then it's 128 right? You'll always have 128 as a subnet when you divide it. Then you will have plus 16 is going to be 128 plus the 16 is going to be 144 plus the 16 is going to be 160 plus the 16 is going to be 176, right? Plus 16 is, oh, I blew that one. 176 plus 16 is going to be 192. Ah, but 192, oh no, 240 is my subnet mask. So 192, 192 plus 16 is going to be 208 plus 16. And that's going to be, so 192 plus 16 plus 16 is the 224. So that's my subnet mask, right? 224. So I don't use that, okay? So how many networks did I just create? Well, see if I can get them all on the screen here. Okay, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I have uh, added one wrong here. So if we go in here, going up by the forty-eight. So I'm missing one of them. Let me count here. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So on one of these guys, I messed one up. So sixteen plus sixteen plus sixteen plus sixteen. Sixty-four plus sixteen is eighty. Plus sixteen is ninety-six. Plus sixteen is one twelve. Plus sixteen, one twenty-eight. I should hit. Plus sixteen is one forty-four plus 16 is 160, plus 16 is 176, plus 16 is 192, plus 16 is 208, plus 16 is 224. So I have my networks there, and that generated the networks for my class, or for my 224 network. Okay, so those are my networks. I'm just counting them wrong. So if we go in here, so those are my networks. So now, oh, my whiteboard's frozen. Okay, just one moment while I reload the whiteboard here. Ah, let's reload the whiteboard. Okay, let's see if we can scroll this down. Okay, there we go. Ah, one moment, please. Technical difficulties in the live stream. 
So what happens is then what I do is I take the number for the broadcast address. So on that 16 network, right? I'm going up by 16s on that broadcast network. The next network is 32. So therefore my broadcast on the next network is 31. And in between, you'll find that there are 14 IP addresses that I can use for host configuration. One will go to the router and then the other ones will go to the other ones will go to the hosts on the system. So it's going to see, I'm going to try stop sharing and share again. So we'll see what happens here. And we'll go ahead and share my screen again and see if this helps. Oh, Microsoft whiteboard, why must you do this to me? Okay. So hopefully this is saved. I'm just going to close this out and open up whiteboard again. That's the nice thing about doing a live stream is you get to see how I recover from something going wrong. But uh, I'll edit this. out. I won't edit this out. I'll just leave it as it is. So if you want to have this here. There we go. Okay, so fine. We'll grab this whiteboard. Should be this one. Yeah, it shows 719. So yeah, I should grab this here. Okay, there's the whiteboard. To be fair, I did load it up quite a bit. So what I can do now is I can have with different subnets, you can see as I go through, you know, the one subnet with 224 incremented by 32. The next one by uh, two, the 241. Um, well, not today I'm not. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if we go in here, what an odd time for them to ask me about my feedback. So let's go ahead and we'll bring that whiteboard up to 100%. And then we'll scroll down to where I am here which is my 224 subnet mask. Um, come on, 224 subnet mask, all the way down at the bottom. Okay, so we have these networks here. This is where I was. So my next, my broadcast address here is going to be 31. I won't do them all. My broadcast is going to be 47. My broadcast here is going to be 63. My broadcast here is going to be 79. We'll just do those. You'll you'll also hit 127. Will always become one. So it's those. That's a little bit of a check. You'll also hit, you'll always hit 128 and 127. Will always be a broadcast. This will be 95. This will be 111, and this one will be 127. So what are my hosts in here? 17 to 30, 33 to 46. 49 to 62, 65 to 78. Let's do the first one. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 14, 14 different machines. Okay. So if I go back to the network diagram that I have here, so I'll just go back to the network diagram where they were saying we're going to have this here. Notice here, I would have, let's say, this network with eight. Okay, we'll take the first one. So I could have dot 17 all the way to dot 30. 31 will be the broadcast, right? Dot 31 is the broadcast, and dot 16 is the network ID. So these are the ones available for hosts. So I would make my router 17, and then I would have a total of 13 left for different devices, which I only need eight. So you can see here, that's how I'm able to divide the network. Everybody would have the same subnet mask, which would be 255, 255, 255, 224. And the default gateway for these hosts would be 17. Default gateway for these would be the next one that I assign and so on. Okay, so there's an example of a couple of subnets with a class C. So what I covered tonight, it's about an hour and a half. And, you know, it's not super duper polished just because, you know, off the cuff here. But hopefully you did understand the things that we talked about. One, we talked about why we would want a subnet. Why is subnetting important? The second thing we talked about is going from decimal to binary and binary to decimal. Okay. Then what we talked about is we talked about the magic chart, right? So I call it the magic chart. And I'll just, let's see, I'll go here and 
the magic chart. I'm sure I have a rainbow pen. There we go. So we have a rainbow pen. It's the magic chart. And the magic chart would allow us to create, you know, how many do I borrow? How many do I leave? What's my subnet mask? And then what we did is we took a look at how we could actually do some of the addressing in the world of building a small network. Now, if you are studying networking, and I again, I could repeat this lecture. You could watch it again. I could, you know, happily do it for different types of subnets. Um, other things that we may wish to do is we may wish to have, for example, a class B network. I, I can do that later, but you know, can't do everything in one night. But the idea here is that you you'll use a tool such as Cisco Packet Tracer, and if you're so if you're doing Cisco stuff, and you can actually build some of the devices here right? So you can actually have a router and then you can throw the switches in there and you can actually configure these as actual devices so that you don't have to buy a bunch of network equipment to practice. This is Cisco Packet Tracer. There are other tools available out there, but before you do anything, you should be able to diagram it out. And if you diagram it out, you should be able to then uh, practice these skills. And then what I can do is if you're interested, just comment down below comment on the live stream or comment down below. And I'm more than happy to, to do other, um, either reinforcing this learning or to go into doing larger subnets and so on. But for tonight, tonight, what you should practice if, you, if you're interested in learning is decimal to binary, binary to decimal, building that magic chart, and then doing the addressing like I showed you. Okay, so if anybody has any comments or anything for me, um, I'll start wrapping up the live stream. But it, it's uh, something new that I'm doing. I'm thinking maybe of doing a live stream every Sunday night for about an hour, hour and a half. And I can do a variety of topics. I can do networking. I can do teams. I can do whatever you're sort of interested in or kind of what I'm interested in at the time. But definitely the best way for me to know what to present is for you to ask. So if there's any topics you'd like to know about, cloud computing, once you get comfortable with this, um, I'm more than happy to show you things like how we can configure a virtual network in an Azure center, which is foundational. You need this in order to be able to do that. And uh, hopefully that was helpful for you. So thank you so much for watching. I'll conclude the live stream now. It always feels weird because I can't, you know, walk you out the door, but it was great that you joined me if you joined me. I'm really glad if you joined me after the fact, but uh, it was a real pleasure having you here. I hope some of this stuff was useful, and I hope by reviewing it, you'll become subnetting experts and comfortable with subnetting. If you do have questions, also post those below, and I'll do some follow-up videos on them as well. Talk to you later, and hopefully see you in the next live stream, everyone. Bye. Take care.